Good afternoon students, this is Mr. Drizat, and today we're going to talk about another component to perspective drawing, which I call the X, Y, and Z axis. Now this is a term from mathematics that I've borrowed, and it's used to make sense of what goes where in linear perspective. Now linear perspective, once again, that's just the illusion of depth in your piece. Now don't be afraid of the term X, Y, and Z axis. It's really not a big mathematical equation thing that we're working on here. It's just simply labels in order to help you find what goes where in a perspective piece. So let's take a look at this example in the middle. What we've got is a cube in one point perspective. Now let's just define our terms here really quick. All you need to know is that the x-axis is the part of a cube or form or anything in perspective that rests flat on the ground. It's the plane that goes straight left to right. Those of you with a geometry background, which at the high school level should be everybody, um, those of you with a geometry background are already familiar with this, plotting uh, points on an x and y axis. Well, once again, the x-axis is the left to right part of the graph. Likewise, in perspective, I use that term to define the left and the right lines or planes in the piece. And it's flat on the ground. Uh, now onto the y-axis. The y-axis, just like in geometry, is any line or plane that goes up and down. Okay, So we've got flat parts and up and down parts. And as you can see on this cube, the up and down lines, those are called the y-axis. Now here's another weird one another term, the z-axis. The z-axis is a term that I use to define any line or plane that recedes or comes close to you, you know, has that sense of depth that recedes off into the distance. All right? It's the z-axis lines that always get sucked into a vanishing point. That's how you know what parts to connect to your vanishing point. Okay? x-axis is flat, y is straight up and down, Z is everything that goes off into the distance. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. And we'll just be pretty brief here. It's not too heavy. Uh, let's look at this picture here. Uh, this is an interior design photograph of uh, like an office or a couch area, you know, a waiting room. And uh, let's take a look and see where the X, Y, and Z axes are. Well, uh, I look at this and I see some areas that go left to right. Uh, this area here, you know, this part of the window, that goes left to right. Uh, the tops of the couches, you know, this line here, uh, way off here in the distance, those would be the x-axis, okay? Uh, also, we've got some straight up and down lines. Uh, this pillar here off in the distance, the window bars, the corners, those are part of the y-axis. And then finally, we've got the z-axis. That's the part of the photo that recedes into the distance, or any slanted lines in your piece. So, so even this one that looks kind of flat, that still recedes. It's part of this whole plane right here. And remember, a plane is a form that's basically defined on all sides. So not only do we have some lines that go down the z-axis, but this whole wall would be part of a z-axis. Likewise, uh, these little partitions over here. Those whole planes would be part of the z-axis. The sides of the couch right here, part of the z-axis in your drawing. This whole wall right here, not part of the z-axis because it's not slanted and it's right smack dab in our face. So let's look at some non-examples. Uh, let's start with uh, some beginning art uh, mistakes. Um, this drawing right here, you know, the house with the pyramid mountains with the snow caps, um, this one lacks depth. It lacks any perspective. There's no sense of distance in it um, or three dimension of any sort. It's completely flat. It lacks a horizon line, vanishing point, and it does not uh, therefore conform to the X, Y, or Z axis terms. Okay? Likewise, let's look at this photo right down here. This photo, an interior design piece, actually does not have an X axis at all. Seriously. Let's get in here and look. There are no left and right lines. Everything is either straight up and down, y-axis, or completely slanted. No flat left and right lines anywhere. So this one doesn't conform to the x, y, and z axis for one-point perspective. 
The reason why is because it's in two-point perspective. You're actually going to be learning that pretty soon. Uh, two-point perspective, just to give you a little preview, has two vanishing points, which is why it's called two-point perspective. And it does not have an x-axis. It has a y-axis, up and down lines. There are lines that are straight up and down. And because there are two vanishing points, there are two z-axis, because, once again, z-axis is everything that is sucked into the vanishing point and everything that recedes off into the distance. So that means that you're going to have to have uh, two black holes sucking in two different z-axis. It sounds complicated. It's really not. In my opinion, two-point perspective is easier than one-point perspective because it draws itself if your lines are accurate. So uh, just a brief little demo here, and uh, we'll move on to the next one, and I hope you guys have a great day.